It was early March in South Lapland, and the days were getting longer and the sun was feeling warmer as winter gradually made way for spring. We had a few months yet before constant daylight and a snow-free landscape, but with the increasing daylight hours it meant more time outdoors doing the things we enjoyed, and we'd found ourselves on another adventure again with our hunting companion Emil, travelling northwest approximately 200 kilometres from Orsula to the Schittelfjell Mountains to cross-country ski and hunt for rocky ptarmigan. It was awe-inspiring to be in the mountains again. They belittled you in a comforting way, reminding you that nature's in control. And given this was the first time me and Megan would be on cross-country skis, we began to realise it was going to be a tough day. We spent some time configuring the skis to our boots. Earlier in the morning it was minus 24 degrees C, now rising to a pretty pleasant minus 10. Shedding layers was an inevitability, as this was going to be warm work. But before the day began, Emil wanted to double check that the 17 HMR rifle was zeroed. And he decided to set up a target on the frozen lake at about 80 metres. Emil was happy with the rifle, and the optics required no adjustment. A 17 HMR is an extremely small calibre, but very effective for the birds we were hunting. Anything bigger is not permitted in these mountains, as it's a popular destination for many outdoor activities. But we got packed up, had a quick brief of our destination, and prepped ourselves for some spectacular views and hard work, which more often than not go hand in hand. The skis took some time to get used to, but made navigating the deep snow and uneven terrain very effective. Inclines needed some effort, but at least the declines were easy enough. But the terrain was forgiving for two beginners at this point, and we had skied for about one hour stopping periodically as Emil began to formulate a picture of where we needed to be. And it was fairly evident from the species we were hunting and the direction we were heading in that things were going to get a lot more technical for our first run on the skis. The alpine, the rocky term again, don't go so low down like we are now. We need to go up another 100 meters to find the wheeler term again. And now in the daytime, I think we are up there where all the rocks are. Yeah. So that's our, where we should go. Okay.
We had skied for many hours around the base of the mountain and its tree line looking for tracks and signs. Emil had gone on without us, further up the mountain, but advised us that it was too icy for us to follow and that we should stay below the tree line and wait for him to return. Two weeks of unusually warm weather in late February had melted a lot of the snow, later turning it into ice with the returning cold, but more importantly it had exposed much of the rocks and shrubs higher up the mountain, giving the ptarmigan less of a reason to come down to feed on the birch bark at the mountain's base. Emil had told us he wasn't coming back empty-handed, so we knew we were in for the long haul. We had been skiing since 8 o'clock, and it was now 14.30. After working hard and sweating for so many hours, you freeze very quickly when you stop moving in such cold temperatures. So we kept moving, collecting materials for a fire, and found a location to escape the wind chill and warm up. shield it from this horribly cold wind we should maintain the heat and if it lights enough of the material then we have enough heat to fend off the wind but the birch tends to smolder quite a lot Wind's coming through here now. <laughs> it was good a second ago. When we first got here, it was all coming this way, and now it's shooting straight up, straight up there. But then that's just life. These email will know where we are now. You need more wood. <laughs> Keep your gloves on. We combed the tree line for dead wood, building up our fire and our wood supply, so that it would be well established once the sun had set behind the mountains. We had no idea how long Emil would be, and we knew him well enough to know that he would not return unsuccessful. Fortunately for us, we always come prepared, and soon enough we had a hot fire, hot tea, warm clothes, as well as some food that we had packed the day before. Bushcraft skills were something we were both very accustomed to, so looking after ourselves was never really a problem. But a few hours had gone by and the sun had finally set behind the mountain, meaning temperatures had begun to drop. So we pulled out some extra layers from our backpack and topped up the fire. And within minutes of doing this, we heard that distinct sound of skis scraping on ice and snow. Emil had returned and we were both in anticipation of whether he was successful or not. Hello. Hey. How are you cold? <laughs> are you? No, are you. Are you cold? No, I'm okay. You're okay. How you did it go? Fire. Very difficult. Really? They are so high up and it's so icy so I can't follow them, you know? Yeah, it's too hard on the yeah. ski. Yeah, I'll, I was also trying to walk, but it's I saw you very up, dangerous. I the skis taking off, yeah. walking. <sighs> it's hard. Yeah. We couldn't follow you. We just we just kept going backwards. And yeah. I was falling over. But we have one, at least. You've got one. Fair play. 
Are you hungry? <laughs> we have eaten quite a lot. Okay. But if you're hungry... No, we can, we can cook it when we come back home. Emil showed us the bird, which was a nice sized male, which can be identified by the black colouring around the face. He also took out some smoked cheese, which had smoked capicale meat inside of it to cook for us on the fire, as well as some smoked reindeer meat that he carries on long trips in the wilderness. He ran a dairy company in Orsula that specialised in smoked meats and cheeses, which tend to go down very well when you've been out in the cold all day. Taxamica. Another kilo of it, and I might just keep warm. <laughs> <laughs> Our pride was a little dented that we couldn't follow on the skis with Airmill up the mountain, but it was a beautiful area to visit and an unforgettable first experience cross country skiing. We refuelled round the fire, and then it was time to ski back to the truck and make our way home. But from me and Meg, we hope you enjoyed another one of our adventures, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.